Tonight, Robin, I will do the most amazing thing ever. I will psychically go into a trance and contact the spirit of Elvis Presley. You have developed some psychic ability. That's right. Much like Ramthar. That's what I will be doing. Is this like channeling? This is like channeling. I'll be doing channeling tonight. Don't go away. Elvis! <laughs> Elvis, come in, please! The following is an encore presentation of The Howard Stern Show. Control. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. I hear a voice. Thank you, thank you. Um, it sounds like Elvis. Thank you. you it, looks, it looks like Elvis, you just can't see it. Oh, wait a minute, I thank see you. something now. You know, Missy. King, is that you? Yeah, that is me. Thank you so much. Where am I? My what is goodness. It? What is this I place? I thought you were in heaven. This what is, is Channel 9. This isn't the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas? <laughs> no. Boy, is this unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> Whose body am I in? I look a mess. What the hell happened? Oh here? my goodness! And what is this? What is that that comes along with you, Alvin? I don't know. <laughs> you got a gas problem? You know, I know that I'm dead, ladies and gentlemen, and I've been gone a long time. Let me do a little music. You know you're on television. I just want to make sure. This is TV. Sure. Yes, this is television. Where's my karate? <laughs> karate. Look at this food. Beautiful burgers and lettuce. Do you miss food? <laughs> I didn't know you could eat. Chocolate. Oh, I love chocolate so much. Oh. Is that why you like to come back in other people's bodies so you can eat? I love to eat so much. Yes. Give me a little guitar, Sonny. You're going to sing. Right well, it's a one for the money, two for the money, <laughs> three for the money. Wait a second, what are the words? <laughs> you, you don't know, remember the words to your song? I always did everything for the money, I swear <laughs> to God. I can't believe it. Are you writing new songs? I'm working on a song about um, soup and ribs. And fried chicken and goobers and raisinettes. Now you're inspired by food? What is your name again? Quivers, Robin Quivers. Mrs. Quivers, yes. First of all, let me say you look lovely. Why, thank you. And second all, second, second all, all, two and all. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you're still on the drugs, Elvis. One of the things I miss most is drugs. <laughs> I love drugs. I love two and all and white crosses. White crosses? What are they? I love, uh, that was speed. I love oh. reefer. I love hash oil. Reaper. I love joints. I love lube. <laughs> Where's my lose? I love crystal meth. Break out the coke. I love it all. Have you ever tried crack? Wait a second. Did you alter your Lulu's? Oh! I'll tell you that. Did you change your skin sack? What have you been looking at up in Those are the most beautiful hand warmers I ever did see, Mr. Quiver. Look, you're a spirit. Ah, 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 I've never seen such round rangoons in my life. Are they as round as that little fat lump of flesh on the back of your mama's neck? Yes, that is very round and very beautiful. You're very, very beautiful. Well, thank you, that, King. Yeah. That was Where's very nice your... of you to know. Where's your beehive hairdo? I don't have a beehive hairdo. I've never had a beehive. You know, when I was alive, yes. I slept with so many women. I slept with thousands and thousands of women, thousands. and I never used any contraception. Really? Well, how many kids did you have? Well, no one never know. I never used the contraception, and there was a reason I never used the contraception. What was that? I was a dumb hillbilly. Oh, that, that could account for it. Can you believe I'm here? I am really impressed, and you look wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, you know who I miss? My beautiful, lovely wife, and my beautiful little daughter, Lisa. Lisa Macaroon. No, 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 no. Lisa Macaroon was she so She was good. not named after food. No, it she was, was Lisa so Marie. <laughs> Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie. Lisa Bordet. No. Let me tell you something. What yeah. was your wife's name? Do you remember? <sighs> Ever since she ran off with a Negro karate instructor, <laughs> I'm not big on remembering her name. I'll be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> you know, the worst thing about being dead, though, is, is I miss my acting. Oh. Mission Quivers, I'm a method actor, as you know, and I, I, I love it so much. Did you ever really study acting? Yes, I did. I did study that acting. And uh, what I would do is method acting. That's I, I would could do. never tell that you would have a lesson. Well, let's say I was uh, going to act, right? And uh -huh. I wanted to act happy. Yeah. I would just think about the lovely lump of flesh on the back of my mama's neck. And you get happy. That's right. And then I think about some soup and I get even more happy. <laughs> and then if the director would say to me, act hungry. Yeah. Why, I'd think about some lamb stew, some chocolate bars, some beef tacos with cheese, donuts, pickles, parmesan, veal pudding, Does and assorted condiments. i tell you something. I can't <laughs> breathe in here. <laughs> Now, if I was acting stupid on my film, if I want to act dopey, yeah. well, I'd just take a handful of Valiums and boom, I'd be dopey. 
And if I had to act sad, I'd just look down at my webbed feet with my six toes Aww. and curse my mama and dada, <laughs> yeah. who was probably brother and sister anyway, because they was hillbillies too. Yes. I tell you, this bit is written as well as my beautiful movie, Harem Scorum. <laughs> that, that was scary, wasn't it? Whatever. <laughs> Remember that movie, Harum Scorum? Harum Scorum? Whatever that was. <laughs> Remember my character's name? My name was Deke. Yeah. Come to think of it, every movie I ever played in, my name was Deke. Right, in that racing movie it was Deke. Racing and, uh, movie. You know what was a great movie for me? What? Blue Hawaii. That you was my best. That. I love Blue Hawaii. I have to confess I like that one too. In fact, it really was beautiful. It was also blue in Wisconsin and blue in North Dakota and blue in Miami. It blew everywhere. It blew everywhere. John, is that it? I want to make one statement because I'm losing contact here with the uh, with the real yeah, world. Yeah, we're losing you too, I think. I want to say I was always loyal to my beautiful wife and my beautiful little daughter, Lisa Bonet. No, no, Marie. Lisa Marie. And I was always faithful to my lovely wife, Priscilla Marie. Priscilla Bonet and Priscilla, <laughs> Priscilla Billa. Priscilla Billa, who was that, uh, not on a full pillar. Me, my mom, Miller. Mr. Quivers, was I ever married to Shirley Bassey? No, no. I need some soup. Some Cokes. Oh, no. Some Burger King, Elvis, some Twinkies. I think it's time for you to leave that body and go back to heaven. I'll tell you what, I'll trade you a banana for two Twinkies. <laughs> How's this, huh? <laughs> Let me sing a little song now okay. for my beautiful girl. Who are you going to sing? Because I'm losing contact. This is for you, my little darling, Lisa Monet. Lisa <laughs> Baudet. Lisa Deo. Lisa Deo. Deo. <laughs> this is for my little darling, little Lisa, Lieutenant Uhura. Well, am I Elvis or my captain of the Star Trek? I don't know where you're from. <laughs> Hard to believe it's me, isn't it? I, I'm really impressed. What's my name? Your name is Elvis. Elvis? Uh-huh. This is Howard. This is no! Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did I fool you? No, wait a second. No, wait a second. Let me stay in character. Come on, I just can't wait. I tell you, you're not getting too smart, lady. This is Howard. Well, I'm just it. Now, listen to me. I thought you looked like Howard, and what is that on you? Let me do a song. Let me do a song. Here I go. Come on. Well, you can steal my drugs, wreck my car, drag my mama to the local bar. You can do anything to her you want to do, but baby, lay off of my food. Lay off of my food. My chip, my pizza. Yeah, come on, take a bite. Yeah, come on. Ask me who you are now from that singing, I'm sure. There's Howard in here. Oh, I'm coming back. Now listen, we got to go. Oh. Elvis didn't stay long enough to sing. Now, say, it was your beautiful macaroons that brought me back, Robin. I can't believe it, I'm well, back. thank goodness I brought them to Oh, I can't believe it, I'm back. This is, uh, my hair is coming. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Who are you oh. now? <laughs> Can't believe it. I think I'm rubbing out Sharpton waiting for my hairdo to kick in. <laughs> Listen, we have phenomenal tape for you tonight. Morton Downey Jr. got into a fight with Stuttering John. He yes. punched John. I think there's a lawsuit here. I can't here. wait to see this. Judy Karn from Laughing is here. I think she wants to punch John. <laughs> and we got, we got the most incredible program for you. Do not, do not go away. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Saturday night, Howard Stern Show. Is it still the summer show, Robin? No, I think they're just lopping off that summer thing and just calling it the Howard Stern Show. Yeah, well, in about two weeks, you're going to decide whether to keep this show on the air. And, uh, hey, we need those ratings now. This is Do the big... Do you want this show? Do you want this show? Make a decision now. Yes, we know what you're saying. In segment one, Gary was unattended. His mouth was oh. showing. Oh, no. Would it, could I, if I just kept my mouth closed... It's impossible, though. Those huge graves, graveyard tombstones in your mouth show through. Now, Gary, just put, put that uh, Bazooka Joe turtleneck. There you go. All right. Now it's better. All better. Now, we've made the sacrifice for you. Can you make the sacrifice for us? Listen, it's we almost got... like PBS. We're making a pitch. Yeah, we're making a pitch for viewers. Why not? Nobody else does it. Um, listen, this is the most incredible piece of tape. Now, if any of you out there are thinking of having children tonight, actually making a child, <laughs> here is a good ad, why not, to have children. <laughs> Birth Stuttering, control, right there. We sent Stutter and John out to a Morton Downey. I can't stand Morton Downey. Morton Downey, to me, I have been compared with Morton Downey in various articles throughout the years, and it really bugs me because, to me, Morton Downey is a no-talent lowlife. I mean, that's my opinion of him. Personally. Personally. But you don't know him professionally. No, I don't know him professionally. <laughs> So what I'm saying is I would never really consider having Morton Downey on the show, but it struck me as peculiar that he was having a second anniversary party, him and his girlfriend. Lori Krebs. Lori Krebs, his production partner and girlfriend. Yes. 
last girlfriend. I read that he was filing for bankruptcy. A couple of months ago we read that, yeah. That means he owes people money, right? So if he owes people money, how is he having a big party at a restaurant? So, John, you went to find Morton Downey where? At a club called... A club called... A club called, called Rains <laughs> in Manhattan. And, and what ends up happening in this tape is amazing because Morton Downey punches him. Yeah. And I, you know, Morton Downey's doing it because he's a, he's... He's an idiot. There you go. Is. All right. Oh, Let's okay. take a look at this tape. I, I didn't know why he had done it. Yeah, now you know because he's an <laughs> idiot. Where are you from? Hi, this is uh, the Howard Stern Show. Excuse me. Is that the uh, Steven Seagal look? Oh, boy. Is that what we're looking at? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot of grease in that hair. Oh, okay. Just wanted to make sure I knew what I was dealing with. <laughs> Gee, his lucky girlfriend. I'm fine. What's your name? John. Hey, John, where's Howard? How come he didn't come? No balls? Well, you know how it is. By the way, he says I have no balls. Why would I want to... Why would I want... Robin, wait a second. What's in your ear? I didn't know. <laughs> That's, uh, we're going to contact Mars with that. It's my antelope. I didn't realize it. Wait a second. I hear it's something. It's my antelope horn. Mars is coming in. <laughs> How could this, my point is about this guy. He says, you don't have the balls. What are you laughing at? Robin's ear. You don't like it? Oh, I can get it. I hear tiara coming. I thought it would remind people of my tiara. That's so right. I thought. <laughs> now, here's the point. <laughs> I think everyone on the show, we're all screaming out to be noticed. Let's take, <laughs> take a look. You know what I mean? And I even said to Robin before the show, thank God you lost one of you. <laughs> so, wait a second. I'm now, crying. the thing with Morton Downey is, I don't have the balls to go see him, but why would I want to go see him? you got better things to do. i got better things to do. <laughs> Sleep. He and he's so kooky <laughs> that he called us today and wanted to come on the show. Yeah. He wanted to come here, so we said, okay, come here and come on the show and talk about this tape. I would have boxed him. And then 15 minutes later, he called us back. And what did he say? He said he can't come on. You know, we have a theory about that. Yeah. You know, he's supposed to have this new toned-down image for his other sta channel. Yeah. And they think he might have rethought his position on this whole thing and not wanted to participate in this because he lost it last night. Yeah, Mort's got that new image to protect. <laughs> okay, so here we go. How come he didn't come? Well, he's tired. He's been, he's on TV now. Or is he trying to check to see if he's grown any balls yet so he won't face me face to face? I don't know. Well, let me ask you a question. How are you paying for this? I mean, we thought you were bankrupt. No, no, I was paying for it. That's why I was wondering why he wasn't here. No. See, you see, he doesn't answer that question, but the problem I have with that is that there's some poor slob out there who's really looking for his money. You know, there's some guy out there who's owed some money, like a, a limousine driver who really needs his money to I'm make sure a living. there are a lot of people who can't collect from him because he's in Chapter 11 or yeah, whatever Exactly. Listen, let me continue this, but uh, let, me do a, let me break for commercial word, and then when we come back, you'll actually see the tape of, of Sutter we'll and John. You get into fisticuffs. Fisticuffs. What do you do? He pops you like this? Like right here? <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do? You hit him back? <laughs> what happened? What are you, a woman? Oh, yeah. Did you hit him? Oh, Did you hit him? Did you hit him? Come on, let's do it. You didn't do anything. Let me tell you something here. All right, let me... Uh, professional. We'll see about that. Uh, let me tell you about the uh, incredible labeling system. It's called the P-Touch 3 labeling system. And this there it is. What a beauty. What are you talking about, Gary and his turtle neck? Yes. <laughs> All right. Take a look at this thing. I've been, uh, I've actually been describing this on the radio a lot. Now there's a chance to see it. This is the P-Touch 3. Did someone back there get flute lessons? <laughs> that was Gary whistling yeah, through Gary, that whistling scarf. Through that scarf. I told you not to whistle through that scarf. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. Oh. I didn't realize. Okay. <laughs> The brother Pete, I thought the guy's whistling through those huge teeth in his. I don't know what he's doing. All right, this is, I play the flute better than that. All right, now where was I? The brother Pete Touch 3. What you do with this is you can actually make really cool labels. Did you take lessons? Are you a concert? Many years? Yes. All right, I apologize. Yeah. Last week he was here not playing a pan flute. Yeah, I mean, uh, seriously. Although that was my twin brother. You're a professional flautist? I am a professional flout faker. Yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, thank yeah, you. Put thank the you. fluid in right side up. <laughs> I apologize to the brother people. Next time I'll get some better music. This is the P Touch 3, okay? And on the P Touch 3, what you have is you can type in into these little keys, and then when you press print like this, look what happens. Turn it on. Turn it on? Okay, wait. Okay, watch. See what comes out? A label like that. And then you just cut it right off, and then you can label anything you want. It has five colors, four styles, five sizes. 
It's an incredible machine. There is no better labeling system. You can label your cassettes. Take a look at that. You can label Robin's date file. You can label... Floppy disk. Floppy disk. <laughs> you can label cassette. Cassette. And it's available at Sharper Image. It's available at Staples and Newmark and Lewis, All which right. I think is very good. Uh, let me just practice this. I can play a better flute than this guy. What is that hot cross bun? Let me see this here. <laughs> Stutter and John, the amazing thing that happened is we sent them out to interview Morton Downey Jr. about his uh, bankruptcy. <laughs> How is this guy throwing parties if he's bankrupt? Somehow he doesn't seem to want to talk about that. No, that he doesn't want to talk about. So um, he ends up punching you is what happens. Watch the tape. He's a wise guy. Here we go. How is the big, how is the big schmucky muck now? No, I'm saying I didn't... Mean, I was making all kinds of dough. Yeah, no, but like I said, I was bad. ripped off people for years. Yeah, because... How'd you get in here? You look like a slob. Really? Well, I, I, don't, I don't have fake, you know, jackets. I don't have anything fake, especially my brain, punk. Blow your ass out of here. First, let me ask you. Did you hear me say, blow your ass out of here? I don't, I don't know. Who do you that. think I'm, some punk that you can come I'm up to and talk to? I'm just asking a question. This guy is so vile. Yeah. This guy really is just a dog, and he's doing it. I guess he's so desperate to get his career back on track. So he'll beat up on the 20th. Yeah. You didn't punch him back? I wanted to, let but I was, see what happened. I was instructed not to hit anybody. Let me see what happens. Well... Well, you can't ask me, because I think Howard Stern sucks. I think he's got the brains of an amoeba. And I think you're a complete ass, oh, Howard. So suck my earlobe, punk. Yeah, well, hey, at least I have a career, Mort. At least I'm making a living. Suck my earlobe? Punk. Yeah, who wrote this stuff? Schmuckety muck or... Schmuckety muck. <laughs> hey, I didn't know I was such a schmuckety muck. I'm, I'm shaking in my boots. <laughs> What a loser this guy is. So meanwhile, we're, all I care about is the poor slob who runs a limo company who can't get paid by Morton Down. He's a little testy. Must be a lot of people knocking on that door and calling on that phone asking for money. You know, there must be a lot of pressure, too, with that big successful production company he has, you know, and all those sitcoms he's planning. Oh, right, You know, he yeah. must crack from all that Hollywood pressure. <laughs> right, John? Yeah, definitely. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> John would know. Get out of here. Oh, Bye, John. Get out of here. Bye, John. I'll sue you, Mark. Did you sue me? Yeah, but, but I, I can't. Stand in line. I can't sue you for <laughs> face. Don't oh, sue me, Mark. Hey, that's not really nice. Get out of here, punk. What? What am I doing? That was so wrong. You're bothering me. Did I ask you to be my guest? No, but, but you did I ask you to be my guest? Yeah, yeah, but you did okay. I ask you to be my guest? No, but you're okay. The answer is no. Yeah, you, 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 I you okayed okay. an interview because I thought I was talking to a human being, not Howard Stern's little flunky. Uh, okay, well, you shouldn't spit right? so much, you know. I, I spit a lot. It isn't my fault. If you don't like it, you can do something about it, because I'm capable of taking care of myself. He's like a five-year-old. Yeah, yeah. He's foaming at the uh, mouth. I know, he's really into it. <laughs> he's really into this. Yeah, he's, he's, I mean, oh, man, believe me, temptation came over me to just smack him, but, you know. So I kept my cool. Listen, man. So take care of yourself out on the street where you look like you just borrowed 50 cents in a car. Listen, at least I have money in my bag out there. Hello, Jason. How are you? Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Can I just ask a question? How do you switch moods that quickly? Yeah, you're all upset. And the next moment is, how you doing? When they remove your warts, do you save them in a pickle jar? <laughs> when I removed my warts, I sent them to your mother, who fried them with your eggs and locks, and you ate them. Man, they're so wound up today. Is this a party for you? I'm not wound up, man. When I get wound up, when I get wound up, I take punks like you, twist your noses off, hey, I'm a college shove them down your... I'm You're a college yeah, grad! I'm a college grad! I will show you, man, what's happened to the educational system in this country. You're a college grad! Hey, can you send me some of that great album stuff you did? You got it, man. You listen, got listen. Seriously. Let me just ask you a question. Would your wife go and dance topless in clubs for the money if you really needed it? Would my wife dance topless in clubs for money? Yeah. She if, like, never did dance topless. I know, but if, if, you know, if you really need the money, since I know that you I are bankrupt. Would, you see, I wouldn't ask my wife to do that. I wouldn't ask my wife. I wouldn't ask my lady to do that at all. 
I got too much class. Holy oh, shit, look at this. What are you saying? You just shut up. You just shut up. I'll kick your ass out. You kick no one back. Don't oh, leave oh, this. Who can handle this? Is it? That's Morton's girlfriend. She took my questions. And she she first takes my questions. Yeah. Then, then Kevin, my producer, gives me new questions. Yeah. So now this guy who called me the gay bastard, the last time when was cruising with Stutter and John, the one I was with. He shows up. He shows up, and now he's calling me, if you listen closely, he's calling me homophobe throughout this whole thing. Right. And now he starts yelling at me, he's going to kick my butt, or whatever, he starts stalling with me. So then I start yelling at him. Right. You know, it's, because now it's like, it's ten against one. Oh, that's what Morton, I'll tell you. What? What, what is this? Winked at me and said, I know how to make good television. This is going to be great television. Oh, Morton, so Morton now is going to make great right. television. That's when he then him. turned around and did what he did. But yeah, he Morton knows how to make that. great television. He punches people. But Morton Why is he, he on TV that. if he knows how to make great television? Well, he knows how to make great television for us. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Morton, for the movie. He doesn't know how to make great television for himself. <laughs> do I have to take a quick break here? Okay, if I have to take a quick break here, why don't uh, we do that and then uh, come back and see the actual fight? Stay tuned for the fight. Yeah, and then we'll all go home. <laughs> we're building, we're building to something here. Let me talk to you about Snapple, though, okay? For a quick second here. Gary, the Snapple, please. You guys will like this stuff. Uh-oh, the flute is there. Now, I'll set up the labels the right way. This is a drink that I really love. I give this to my kids. I give it... Boy, that flute, boy, that is a bad flute. But I give it to the kids. Uh, me and the missus drink it. Me and Mrs. Stern, the very lucky Mrs. Stern. She's <laughs> right. not as lucky as Lori Krebs, yeah. but... Uh, Morton Downey's girlfriend. You've never thrown a party for your anniversary. That's right, I never do. <laughs> that's, that's why I have some money, I guess. Anyway, here's Snapple. Take a look at this product. Everything in here is 100% natural. There's nothing bad for your family to be drinking. If you notice the bottle in the middle here, this is called Snap Up. It's a sports drink. Snap Up, I, I think it's a good drink because if you're going to be exercising, that means you're into health. Why exercise and then all of a sudden drink something unnatural, full of chemicals, full of preservatives, and full of artificial coloring. This has none of those things. That's why Snapple's so good. No artificial ingredients. It's an energy replacement drink. They've got, I don't know, they've got so many different flavors, raspberry, cranberry. They have six real brewed iced teas. And remember, no artificial ingredients. They're made from the best stuff on earth. This is Snapple. We recommend you drink it. If you want to be like us, you must drink Snapple. That flute's calming me down. What a relaxed man. And what a, show, what a show business giant, yeah. pal. What do you think I am, pal? What's that network he's on? CNBC? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Him and Dick Cavett. That's now, going well. Now, if you're not going to call Fox a network, how can you call CNBC a yeah, network? Right. Fox a network, yes. <laughs> so they got a real problem with that whole CNBC concept. Excuse me. Did you see him hit my hands when you get that? Yeah. yeah. You want to start kicking ass? Oh, oh, nothing from my wife. Huh? Well, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm seeing you in court. Relax. Hey, who's that blonde? That's, that's his Lori Kreb. Yeah. She. That's his girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I mean, she hasn't left him yet? He doesn't have any money. Why is she with him? I don't know, man. Well, it must be love. Wouldn't you love a guy who looked like Steven Seagal? And he fights like him, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just holding on, you see, I'm just holding on to the question. I like the cigarette thing going on, too. Like, the cigarette is always in the mouth. I like that. I like that move. This is a phenomenal piece of tape. It really is. What is this guy fighting about? I have no idea. Did you get that? He just fought me. Who's that guy? The boss guy just hit me. Who's that guy? What is he doing? That's, see, that's, the, that's a, I guess, a balancer at the club. I see. He's holding me back, but you notice that homophobic guy is now hanging out with Morton now. The guy who's screaming you're a homophobe. Yeah, and that's now, now you look at his face, he's looking down at my tape recorder. I see, and he's going to steal your tape yeah, recorder. Yeah, and, and then break it up. Well, someone takes your tape recorder, we don't know who, and smashes it. Yeah, okay. I have it right here. All right. Now, play that silly little fart laugh. Hey, what? Hey, watch, watch. Watch, watch, watch. She's putting that over the camera to protect Mort's image. <laughs> yeah, she's always thinking. That's why she's a producer. Right, you got to protect the image. Girlfriend. you got to protect that image. <laughs> what? Uh, there goes the tape recorder. Yeah, Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him, man. Doing my job. There you go. Hi, 
That's all. No reason. Still haven't found that though. Yeah, I guess uh, that upset him a lot. I don't know. That's pretty cool though. Yeah, and you know, it's been, since he hit me, my back been hurt. No I told bad. you to wear a collar. I, it's really. Been... Where is your neck brace? Uh, all right, we got to uh, take a break now. Judy Carn is going to be out. There. Let's draw your attention to this very beautiful sign I made up. And if it's blocking my face, it's okay. I am very proud to show you this, Robin. Mm -hmm. This is the box set that I am now putting out. It's called Howard Stern Crucified by the FCC. Ah. It is a double box set, CD or cassette that you can order right now. For those of you who have never heard our radio show, for those of you who have been listening to the radio show, this is every single tape that the United States government has banned from our airwaves. I am presently going to court over these tapes. These tapes cannot be heard on the radio anymore. Plus, there's a magazine inside, Robin. Ah, very good. Yeah. What's in the magazine? Well, it's got me uh, mooning, <laughs> big crack in my butt. Wait till you see it. It's beautiful. The magazine is the most warped magazine you'll ever oh, read. Oh, no. But uh, here it is. There's the box. So blasphemous, they won't even put it in the stores. There I am holding the crucifix, Robin. <laughs> there I am as a modern-day Jesus. Ah, as you are, yeah. I kind of look like Jesus, don't you think? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> he had a beard. Yeah, well, <laughs> how do you know he had a beard? I don't know. Did he wear an earring? <laughs> All right, anyway, so you can uh, order that by calling 1-800-52-STERN. You must be over 18 to order that, by the way. You've got to be over 18 years old because it's a very filthy tape, I'll be honest with you. And now, back to the Encore presentation. On, so, a couple of weeks ago, John had a problem with Judy Carn. He went Did she to... hit him, too? No, but that's what she should have done, I guess. <laughs> no, no, you know, no, we don't encourage that. We don't like hitting. In fact, I don't even know why Mort was hitting No, uh, there was John. no reason for that. But here's... Here's what happened between Judy and John, just to give you some kind of uh, frame of reference, if you will. Uh, this is for uh, the, the, the Howard Stern Show, a lot of the broadcast on WXRK Howard. Radio. I love the man. Can I ask you a question? Uh, you want to get high after this party? Like, you know, smoke a doobie? You can't ask stuff like that. No? Why would you? That's to me. I thought, I thought you used to smoke pot. I used to, yeah. Oh, uh, but no more? No. I got some gnarly quarter ounce of, my, of, of ganja in my car. If you Damn it, but no. Um, let me ask you, is, is Bert, is Bert, is Bert, uh, is Bert Reynolds what? like a safety <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
That's wonderful, Saturday, okay? I can highly recommend it. Really? Yeah. All right, let me ask you, do you have a quota? What's a quota? You know, like 50 cents? <laughs> like what? You know, like 50 cents? Uh, uh, on me? Yeah, I, you know, I need to... Why? Well, I'm trying to get some money for a subway token. Okay, don't worry about it. It's couple couple round, darling. Uh, would you ever get breast implants? No, hardly, no. Really? I'd look silly with this. I mean, I'm just saying, because, like, you're a very attractive woman, and, Thank you. you know, guys, some... some My are just fine. They've done fine for all these years. They'll, they'll be fine. All right, listen, thanks a lot, Judy. It's been a lot of fun. Okay. Thank you. Don't ever ask so good. What? Don't ever ask so good. <laughs> Don't ever ask what? No questions. No questions, all right. No. No. Okay, I'm on. Unless that's your lesson to you. Yeah. Uh, well, very good. Very good indeed. Okay, so anyway... Now, Robin, don't refer to her as Goldie. Okay, oh, that's a big that was Judy. It's a very beautiful Judy card, and then she's going to take this up with you. Where is Judy? She left. <laughs> she Whoa. left. Judy split. Oh, wow. Judy. Here I am, yeah. Judy. Oh, and you look damn oh, good, too. Oh, I've got my whole coat up around yeah. that thumb. Hi there, Judy. Hi there, darling. Good to see you. Take a seat. I adore the man. You love yeah. the way I said that. That's it. Now, Judy. Hello. How are you? Hot. Hello. Uh -huh. oh. Don't start. Judy, oh. what happened? Now, I didn't think John was that offensive. What happened? What no. went wrong? Okay. Um, for the last year, mm -hmm. I've been proving that I'm a good girl, keeping a low profile, I don't, you know, don't mess around, don't go out late, all those things, don't okay? Don't do drugs, don't do anything. Don't do nothing, right? right? Right, I even didn't go to that Morton Downey thing last night because I was doing the show tonight, you know what I mean? Okay, really Want good girl. Want to be prepared, look good, sleep, right. and all okay. that stuff. All right. Now, because of all my troubles, and we all know how many, you know, all right. my troubles, they've all been very well documented. Right. Um... I was, uh, um, I was there at that party, and this tap on my shoulder, and I just arrived, actually. Right, right. And crews aren't supposed to do that. You can tap and turn you around and shoot you. They're right, supposed right. to ask you first, right? Right, right. And so the first question is, hey, do you want to listen to Dope after the show? Right. Now, for someone to say that to me, um, under any circumstances, is an ass. okay? Because yeah. I am fighting this image. Right. Now, I've been such a good girl, I'm getting work offers and things now. I am also... Well, wasn't that a good opportunity to kind of say to John, hey, look, I'm fighting that image. I don't do drugs anymore. Is, he'd have had the grace to, to ask me or to even, like, mention that this was going to happen. It's really yeah, He tough. came on too strong right came away. Came on too strong. There and, was and no preamble. There was no preamble, exactly. Robin. Exactly. And I seemed to be the only one there that hadn't heard of him and didn't know what he did anyway. Because <laughs> you pulled your life together. I mean, because you wrote a book about all this. Of you course. wrote about... Because everyone said to me... Somebody said to me, how it says... Crew is here, right? Right, right. And he asked this guy and he asked questions and stuff. I would have been prepared. You were on but, edge about the drug thing anyway. Well, the fact is I've got a thing going with immigration, you know, right. and I have to prove uh, my worth at the moment. The immigration might throw you out of the country yeah. if you don't... Uh, yeah. Right. What it is, is, is that um, when I married years ago to him... To Bert. Yeah, we won't mention. Bert, uh, Trump. The guy uh, owns America. Uh, can't he I keep know. you in the country? Can Bert well, give Judy <laughs> a, a little recommendation <laughs> to immigration? He's trying to keep me out of this. <laughs> Bert. <laughs> well, he, he, he promises not yeah. to go to Florida. Florida. Judy hates to talk about Bert. <laughs> you know, but you know what's funny about you? You wrote about, Bert in, the, you wrote about Bert in your book. Yeah. Okay. So when you think you wrote about him in the book, you know everyone's going to ask you about him. I know, but it's, it's, it's gone on and on now. I'm yeah, bored. You're I'm bored with it. And you know what? That's bored with it, I'm sure. Anyway, oh, so let me get back to the story now. All right. right. Okay, hang in there. So, yeah. I got a green card. Had yeah. it for 25 years, fine. Right. Green card. And when I got into trouble, right. okay, and I went out of America when I broke my neck, Go ahead. Out, out of the country for three years, and I lost my green card because oh. of that. Didn't know. Right. All right? So... When all my troubles happen, I'm now like an undesirable. Right, right. So they're allowing me here at the moment on a visitor's visa, right. and I'm now like having hearings, okay? And so I we're in the middle of hearings right now. This right. is it. Okay. This is it. And and Judy Connolly will be thrown out of the country, or she'll get to stay. Uh, I hope so. I mean, you know, I, I am America. I love America. Hey, yeah. I'm a part of America's pop culture for five minutes. Well, if you were married to Burt Reynolds, that doesn't get you in the country to stay? It gets you a green card, but no, when I broke my neck... No, around, oh, I uh, you know, and, <laughs> when, and I, when I broke my neck, I had to leave this country for three years. How did you break your neck? Car accident. Right. Drunk driver. Right. Not me. You weren't the drunk driver. No, no, no. make that clear. Okay. All righty. So yes, so that so that, that it was a particularly you know uncool and, and somebody's been at you know busted as many times as I and it would be in Guinness's book of records. Right, you know what right. I've got. Yeah. Um, but now so, you're totally drug free. You have no interest in drugs. Anymore. No interest. I did. 
Hey, immigration, if you're watching, there's no interest in drugs oh, anymore. That's behind her. Well, couldn't. you know, they have these rules, and I'm sure that they will give me a waiver. It's just that they can't just, like, give it to me ad lib because I am who I am. You right? are who you are, absolutely. But you know, they say, And where's they Goldie say, Hawn during all this? Where are all hey, her friends? Where are all her friends? Where are all her friends? Where are all her friends? Can't I'm we just trying. give her an okay? <laughs> We're Americans. It's okay with me if she stays. I don't care. It doesn't hurt anybody. All right, she has a little weakness. You know what it is when you do drugs? You have a little weakness in your life, but you're over that weakness. You're a strong woman now. I want to work. You want to work for Christ's sake. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, then, now. Um, I heard so you have a plan. Your plan to stay in the country is you're offering your services to go to, what is it, to Iraq? Yeah. Really? And you will, hey. you will entertain the troops? My manager slash partner, Jeff Norman, yes. told me that Jay Leno is going to Iraq to an, I went, get me on the perfect. Because you will go there I and entertain would, the troops. Immigration will love you, and then you will be able to service. stay in the country. Any kind of public service. John, what's the matter with you going up to Judy and not preparing her properly? You know what you should have done? You should have decked him. Hey, you should have decked him. What's wrong with you? Like, like the other... Uh, yes, yes, yes. I saw that piece of film. Yeah, yeah but you couldn't advocate something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, All yeah. right. Now I would never be that aggressive anyway. I think the point of this segment is Judy Karn has gotten her life together. She does not want... She came here to clear up. She does not want to be asked about drugs. She doesn't want to be asked about Bert. To hell with Lonnie. Goldie, screw you. Old news. Buzz off, honey. That's it. That's what she's trying to say. She's the original socket to me girl. That's class, right. And then uh, she started getting it uh, socked to her. I can do benefits. I can do benefits. Absolutely. All right, listen, I want to thank Judy Carr yeah. for coming on tonight and clearing up. There's no more bad blood between you and John. Is no, that no. it? Sorry. He'll never ask you a question yeah, like that again. Judy, <laughs> Judy, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. Okay. Here hey, she goes. Oh, the man. There she is, Judy Carr, everyone. Bye, love. Planet off a of, uh, off a of robin's earring. Wait a second. What, what does that what say? Is it? Yes. What is it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Can you get it? Is yes. it coming in clear? If anyone sees Sharon, Salam. Get in touch with her. Her son is looking for her. <laughs> he has a there poem he wants. Yeah, to he, he has a poem, a rap He's poem. He's writing again. Hey, a couple of things have been going on around New York and around the world, and we want to keep you informed in our own bizarre way. So Robin has some news for us now. That's right, Howard. You know our. Streets of New York have become so marred by crime that a lot of New Yorkers want to leave. Is Morton Downey one of those New Yorkers? Unfortunately, like no. Leave. He's not leaving, and we found some other people who are determined to stay. Good. You know, you know, New York is a pretty bad place to live. I'll say that. But it is still the... It's New York City. It's the only place like it in the world. So there are people determined to stay in New That's York. That's right. We caught some of them on tape this week. I'd like to see that. The pressure is on Dinkins. Because he's a black mayor and a white man trying to make him think, oh, if you do something to help the minority, oh, your next campaign is f***ed up, man. Come on, man, we need help out here. We need, we need a mayor that's going to help fix the homeless situation. The bad is the sick. Okay, come. See, there's a man trying to work out the problems of the city. Now I want to stay in New York. I got to stay in New York. If he could only articulate the problem. If only he'd let that other woman talk, maybe it would be nice to see more New Yorkers, but you know. Is that a woman? Uh, I don't know who anybody is. It could be I Jimmy J.J. J. Walker. I don't know who that is. I thought we'd ask John if he'd pick her up. I don't know. know. It's very confusing, but let's get back to the tape. It's nice to see New Yorkers sticking together. They're fighting. 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 What about us, man? Uh, what about us? Why do you what think people are moving out of Manhattan? That one for free now. That one for free. Why are you populated with homeless people? The price of uh, uh, property around here is going down. But uh, that's why people are moving out of Manhattan. See, he's got the problem right. Homeless people. Well, wait a minute. I don't understand. The ho price of housing is going down, and that's why people are moving out. Exactly, Robin. <laughs> See, you don't understand the I, problem. I can't, I've never been good at economics. This is such a good explanation. <laughs> He's why I'm leaving New York. I will be taking the first boat out of here. I'm not going back tonight yeah. after saying this. But at least the guy's willing to make things work, and he's trying to come up with solutions. What about the others? What about other New Yorkers? It's getting, it's, it's really getting now dangerous. My problem. And, the, and, the, and, and, and the property value, especially in this area. In Manhattan. No, man. Excuse me, did she say, let me speak my politician? Yes. <laughs> you know, I've been using that word in the, incorrectly all these years. What do you usually say? I say, let me speak my politics for a second. 
<laughs> and I'm wrong, and I want to apologize to everyone. Let me just hear that again. I just want to go back to that. I'm rewinding here. I'm oh, I was going to say, I can't understand him at all now. I'm going backwards, and it ain't much different. Let me see that here. It's getting And the property value, especially in this area. Hey, man, man. You're going to pay me some money. Hey, man, there yeah, is going to be a war. That's all I got. Listen, I need a squeegee. A squeegee cost three dollars. You know what? I need a squeegee cost three dollars. And reality is history. And reality is history. And you're not going to spend it. Well, you know, by knowledge, common sense, damn was your favorite raisin on a common sense basis. Not your cat. Don't keep paying money. Don't keep paying money. Get the money. Okay, now. Excuse me. Is it possible that your earring is confusing everybody, Robin, in New York? Is that what's happening? They're getting confused from the reflection? Could they be picking up signals oh. on the ear? Wait, they're what is that? Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everyone is confused. Okay. Very good. Wait a second. Has she spoken her politician yet? Yeah, because I think so. <laughs> but wait. Confused. There, I, I, are there more New Yorkers there? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love you. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, good. Yeah, I'll like There's another. Good. Finally, someone who's going to make some sense. Yeah. He's going to straighten everything out, I think. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Don't do that, man. <laughs> Well, that woman was uh, well, yes. like a prophet. She said there was going to be a war. I just didn't know how soon. You know, I recognize her. Remember her hit, Walk On By? <laughs> <laughs> Walk On yeah, By. That, that was not Dion Warwick. It wasn't? No. Walk On I By. I think it was uh, Whitney Houston, her niece. <laughs> All right, there it is. Anyway, Howard, also yes. in the news this week, Larry King got into big trouble on the Joan Rivers show after being one of the judges of the Miss America pageant. Ah. He called Miss Pennsylvania a pig. Yeah, takes one to no one, huh? Captain of the quarter, the quarterback of the all-ugly team, Larry Hit King. Hit the button. Yeah, here we go. The dummy was prettier. That's what he said, and look at him. Look yes. at him. Yes. Yeah, look at so that. I was home, and I called... Now, this is Miss Pennsylvania, the woman he called a pig. He called her a pig, huh? Yeah. Hey, Larry, without that microphone, you'd be begging her for sex. You'd be begging her. I'd like to see the women Pennsylvania didn't use. <laughs> Granted, she's not the most beautiful woman, but she's certainly no pig. Certainly out of Larry King's caliber. I think between her and Larry, she'd win. Yeah, I think if so. If they were in a contest, she'd win. My director, the teller wasn't feeling well, and he said, well, if you don't feel well now, you better sit down because you're not going to feel well in a minute. That's what happened when she heard about the Larry King comment. Right. She got it from, uh, you know, somebody Aww. with the pageant. Aww. Well, that day that he oh, said that. I'm not so anyway, feeling well today either. So but she didn't win the pageant. Right. Miss America is a black woman. I know. Hit she, the button. White people can't win anymore. What's going on well, here? Let's take a look at her and see if she's just extremely beautiful. All young women today who want to achieve, who want to excel today, are, are looking at me and are saying, "Yes, this is someone that they can look up to." And I'm very proud to be a role model for all young women today. Jealous it's of that true. crown, Robin, or what? Uh, uh, you know, doesn't compare, if you put the doesn't... earring on top of your head, you'll be Miss America. <laughs> Let me tell you something about this Miss America. She is certainly not the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. I'll be honest with you. Is she the most beautiful woman? No. In America? No, not the most beautiful woman in America. Gary with that turtleneck is not beautiful. i got to take a quick break. We'll be back with more well, news. Well, when we come back, we'll compare Miss Pennsylvania with Miss America, and we'll decide who's a pig and who's not a pig. I will decide because look how beautiful I am. <laughs> We'll be back. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we're back, and we're doing the news, and uh, we're learning about Miss America. Well, we're in the midst of our own Miss America pageant. We'll okay. compare Miss Pennsylvania, who was one of the ten finalists, and who Larry King called the pig, with Miss America. There's Miss America. Yeah. Hit the button again. Okay. There she is. There she is. Now that's Miss Pennsylvania. Miss Pennsylvania. Miss Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And there's Sharon Salam. Now who do you think should have won? I'll tell you something. Sharon Salam, I think. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think that. You know, what's her talent though? Getting her son in jail though, or getting him out of jail. I don't know which. <laughs> well, let's, we should have crowned her. I wish I had come up. I didn't think she'd win. Yeah, well, she did win. I don't know. <laughs>
Well, I don't know where they get these Miss Americas from. I look them over. Listen, uh, listen, I'm as ugly as that. I mean, there's no, there's no. You're beauty not even going to enter the contest. But if you're going to enter a beauty pageant, where do they get these women? They all look like they're 45 years old. They look like my mother. Well, it gives me hope now. It, I tell you something. You're as beautiful as any of these Miss Americas, Robin. Give me hope. I'm entering next year. I'll tell you something. Now, and uh, I'll tell you something. I really, black women must be more beautiful than white women because every year a black. Well, woman. it's not just a beauty contest, Howard. So I figure the black women must be smarter or more talented. I don't know what it is, but look better uh, in a bathing suit. Who knows what it could be? This is giving hope to all women. As a matter of fact, our executive producer Bob Woodruff just put on a bathing suit. <laughs> oh, he God. wants to enter the Miss America beauty pageant. <laughs> well, speaking of beauty, Howard, yes, yes. have you been looking at Daryl Strawberry? Yeah, I have been looking at him. He's become a very interesting man, not because he's hitting so well, right. but because of what he's doing with his head. Right. Yes, yeah, so I took a few pictures of Daryl, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll just look at an evolution of uh, his little hairdo here. Yeah, he's had a couple of interesting hairdos. I well, like in 1985, he had a full head of hair. He looked like a normal kind of guy. There right, that he was is. him. That's the he's normal. Okay, that's Daryl Strawberry. He said, right. okay, that's a good-looking guy. Then all of a sudden, he just started shaving the sides of his head, and then he got really... Now, hold uh, it a second. Really uh, creative and put straw on that the side of his head. That is beautiful. How long do you think that lasts? Well, it couldn't be too long because every other week I see something different on the side of his head. Yeah. Now, from the straw, he's gone to this. Can you look real close there? There it is. You can see the swirl. Wow. Can you see that? Wow, look at that. That is dynamic. That's incredible. I can't imagine what he's going to do next week. Next year, the ears come off. <laughs> the ears will be totally lopped off next year, and it's going to be the most incredible look you've ever seen. Is this what he's doing to try to improve his hitting? What happened to the good old days when you'd carve the Batman logo into your head? <laughs> Everybody's getting so fancy, you just can't keep up, you know? Well, if this is working for him, I think he should keep doing it, because I understand his performance has improved. Well, you know, by two years from now, you'll see him not only lop off his ears, but I think the fingers will come off after that. <laughs> and then you won't know what to... I think, you know, listen, I know a lot of black guys. I have a lot of black friends, and they tell me there's not a lot you can do with the black hair. Name some of your black friends. <laughs> well, right now, not off the tip of my tongue, can I name some of them? Listen, Robin, I've worked hard to unload a lot of my black friends. But, uh, I, listen, when it comes to my black friends, they tell me in the old days that it's very hard. When you have black hair, you either have regular hair do. So at least what you gotta... What do you do? You gotta carve. You gotta carve names. You gotta carve logos. You gotta carve slogans. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, what I do you do think that. I should do? Should I uh, invest in some of this hashtag hair cutting? put a hat on your head and just play baseball. That's all oh, you should do, all that's right? That's where the money is. That's where the money is. Listen. Is that what's That's happening? what's happening. Uh, do you think there's any more after Daryl Strawberry's head? I think we pretty much covered it tonight. <laughs> See you, you next week. Don't, uh, don't miss it. 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 You don't pull nothing from my wife. Why Look at that. Huh? Well, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'll, I'll, I'll see you in court. Relax. 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 Did you guys just get it? Did you get that? 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 Uh -oh. That's what you don't do that, man. Don't do that. Don't